All right, so uh, one last little detail to take care of. This is something that I do with every website design as I'm starting to, to get into it, and then I replace this. There are two things that we need to add, two things that we need to add when you're designing. And actually, this is bare minimum. I would, I would always add a couple others. But in the content area, we're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to copy and paste something called lorem ipsum. I don't know if you know what lorem ipsum is, but you can Google it. Lorem ipsum, okay? <clears throat> and it's actually Latin, okay? And you can, um, and it's, uh, it's just basically a, a series of Latin sentences. It's a, it's a simply dummy text of printing and typesetting. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, and it's basically a, um, a, a small paragraph that I like to copy and paste into my websites to see how the text of the body is going to look like in the content area. Okay? So here's, here's, Lorem, here's Lorem Ipsum. You can just type it in and then, and then just copy it. So I'm just going to copy it here like this. You can read up about it. It's got, some, it's got a history. It's kind of cool. Um, and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my content area. And you want to take a look at when you're, when you're ready to click into your content area, you'll notice that whenever I click, you can see the cursors over here. I really want to be in the content area right here. So when you're doing text, all you have to do is just click in between the beginning content tagline here and the ending tag. And then you can just paste it, boom, like that. And that's essentially how, um, how it works. I mean, when you want text to appear as text in your website, you just don't put it inside any brackets, and there it goes. And you, that, you mean that we did that with the menu and everything like that. But you just don't put the text in brackets, and now it's not a code. It's just text, just like it would be in, say, Microsoft Word. And then what I like to do is I like to encase it in a paragraph. So I'm going to go uh, Command-P, and I'll say slash P. And then what I can do is just to kind of fill this up a little bit, I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to return, paste, return, paste, return, paste. I'm going to do about three or four of those. And then you'll see, now all of a sudden, I've got three paragraphs of lorem ipsum inside my, my website. Um, let's take a look at this. I'm going to add one last thing. So I'm going to go to Preview Safari. And you'll notice a couple of things happen. Well, first off, I've got a break here. This is interesting, between the, um, between the <coughs> menu bar and the content. But the second thing is this thing runs from edge to edge. It doesn't look very good. Okay? In, in writing, when we're writing a document, right, in Word, you can control your margins. Don't get that confused in HTML, though. With CSS and HTML, your margins actually move the box around. What we want to do is move the, does anybody know what the command is that we're going to indent their text a little bit here? Move it in. It's the padding. Okay, now, so in Microsoft Word, it's called margin. In HTML and CSS, it's called padding. So let's go back to Dreamweaver here. And so I'm going to go up to my CSS. I'm going to look at my content. And I'm going to add padding to this. Now, here's the important thing. As I add padding, okay, uh, a lot of times I like to control it separately side to side. So my padding left will be 10 pixels. My padding right will be 10 pixels. And then a lot of times, I'll do the same thing with my padding bottom. But then the top, because I've got a little extra space of white, because that's part of the menu bar, I'm going to take the padding to the top and make it 5 pixels only. And what that'll do is you can see here, preview it again in Safari. Oops. So now, it moved everything in. But what else happened? What's going on here? What did I do wrong? When you add patterns or margins to a, a div, what happens to the overall width and height of the div? It increases by the same amount that you added it. So if you need this thing to stay 960 pixels, which we do, okay, what we have to do here is if I added 10 pixels of padding on the left and the right, now my width needs to come down by 20, a total of 20. So I just take the width back to 940, and let's go back to Safari 
and you can see now everything lines up. Now what's interesting is now all of a sudden the gap is gone, which is a little weird. I'm not quite sure why that happened. My, I was going to try uh, setting my margins on the top and the bottom to zero. So you can see in the code here, I've got margin left auto, margin right auto to center the content div. Um, uh, I might have had to go margin top zero, okay, and margin bottom zero. So sometimes if you get a mysterious gap in between your divs, sometimes if you don't tell it what the margin is, it'll push the margin anyway. Different browsers do it different ways, I've found, but that is usually the case. You have to set the margins manually, which I think is stupid. If I don't want a margin and I leave margins out, I think that it should just say, okay, he didn't put margin in, so therefore it should equal zero, but that is not the way it works, okay? It assumes that there's a margin. The last thing that I want to do is put a design in for, my for a title. So I'm going to go hit return a couple times in here, and then I'm going to go div, and this is interesting, you can do this, this is one of my favorite things to do, div align center, okay, and, uh, and then I'll just end it really quickly. This is an easy way of centering text. So I'm going to center text, but I want it to do is I want it to have a title. So then I'm going to go h1, which is title 1, which is supposed to be the biggest, okay, Let's see, make sure that you guys can see this. So h1, and I'll just say welcome, just like that. And then I'll end the title, okay? If you don't do that, then all of this will be nice and big. And then you can see right here now how that comes up as a title right there. Nice and simple, okay? <clears throat> In your CSS, way up at the top with the body and the header, you can also add a command H1. And you can control specifically the font or the font size of that title. So I'll leave it the same font as everything else. But maybe I don't want it quite as big. Uh, let's try like 18 pixels. Let's see how that looks. Nah, it's a little too small. Let's try 20. That's better. So it's a nice title. It's bolded. It, it, you know, it separates itself away from the rest of the text. But it's not, you know, hideously large and taking up a huge amount of space. And then again, I should preview it in Safari and make sure everything's looking good. So I've got, you know, padding on the side. Uh, my text looks okay. I can kind of see how this is going. The last thing that you should always do to just to tie up our websites here is in the footer, you should put your company name. Okay, so I'm just going to go div align equals center. Okay. And I'm going to say company name, and I'm going to say company phone number, and then I, I always like to do a link to the contact us page in the bottom, so then I'm going to have that. And there it is, just like that. And in the footer, I might say, uh, start changing the size a little bit, so we'll just go um, padding, top, uh, maybe 10 pixels, and then I'm going to make this maybe only 50 pixels tall so it doesn't take up so much space. And let's just see how that looks. Still pretty big. Um, but you get the idea just to, and you don't even have to do it. You can just do what I did there. Oh, interesting problem. Ah, so here's my problem. This is a little check. If you can't see your text, just go like this. See if you can highlight it. So I have the footer being, is not, uh, does not have a white background. It's got a black background. It's just not showing up in Dreamweaver. Um, but I remember deleting the background color. So here I have two choices. I can make my background color of the footer the same as the content. OK. Or I can just change the color of the font. So let's just go here and just change the color to white. Just like that. And now how? Let's going to look nice, see? And so now my footer is actually not part of my content area. I'm just kind of having it floating. You don't have to do that. You can have the footer be the exact same background as the content area, and it all looks like it's part of the same page. You can have it float along the bottom. That's a style choice. It's completely yours. No right or wrong answer there, just as long as it's readable, right? I think that makes sense. So those are three things, last three things we need to tie this up. 
copy and paste lorem ipsum from the web, put it into your body, make sure you set some padding, 10, 15, 20 pixels is usually fine, make sure you delete the same number of pixels from the content area so that the content area stays the same, and don't forget, if you say padding left 20 and then padding right 20, you don't delete 20, you don't subtract 20 from the width, you subtract 40, okay, because 20 plus 20 equals 40, right, I mean, I shouldn't have to say that, but I will. Um, and then the same thing, if you want the height to stay the same, if you do padding top and bottom, you also have to adjust the height. Um, and that's very important. You always have to adjust that when you're done. Okay?